Hello, I'm Dr. Bud Zauk, and I'm the Program and Technical Manager of the DADS program. Today, I'm going to give you an update on the breath and touch systems. Just to orient you, we're here in the main DADS chemistry lab at KA Technologies, located about 30 miles west of Boston. The lab has three main components, the main verification lab, a vehicle integration lab, and our offices where we oversee the program. Right now, I'm in the breath area, which is in the main verification lab. To refresh your memory, this system is designed to take fast, accurate, and precise reading of someone's breath alcohol content. And if they're above the legal limit, prevent the vehicle from moving. Unlike existing interlocks, the DAT sensor is not a punitive device. It's completely passive. You don't have to blow into a tube like a traditional breathalyzer. You simply give a simple puff of breath into the sensor and it will detect alcohol in less than a second. To get there, we had to reduce the size of the sensors so they could fit into a vehicle. And to do that, we had to evolve these systems significantly. That means making them smaller, faster, and more lightweight. Each generation that you see here represents at least a year of research to do that for each sensor. The latest version is what we call Generation 3.3. We have been testing this generation for the past 18 months. Here at KEA, we install these sensors into vehicles, begin verifying them, and get them on the road as part of our human subject testing. We've made so much progress that these devices are now ready for use in fleet vehicles as a zero tolerance device. This is so government vehicles, trucking companies, and others can ensure their employees aren't drinking and driving. While we're proud of where we are with the Gen 3.3 system, it's not where we want to be. This is the size where we want to be. It's about an inch wide and has to detect precise amount of alcohol in less than a second. In the past, going from this size to this size is something that would take five to six years. But we've been able to accelerate that timeline and expect to get there in just one to two years. The final step is to evolve this sensor into Gen 4.0, which is the version that will be made available in consumer vehicles. So that covers the breath system. Next, we'll talk more about the touch system, which is the second technology we're testing here at the DADS program. So here we are at the touch sensor side of the lab. As a reminder, the touch sensor uses something called tissue spectroscopy, where we essentially shine the light into the finger or the palm side of your hand. The driver places their finger on a push to start button in a vehicle or the steering wheel. The reflected light from the finger contains optical properties of what's inside the finger. That can include alcohol, and that light tells us if the driver has been drinking. This kind of technology has been around for a few years and mostly used to test workers at construction sites. The problem was, the system was only available in a bulky piece of equipment that sat on a table and could take about 30 seconds to two minutes to get an accurate reading. What we have to do now is engineer a system that can fit inside a vehicle with smaller sensors that can take a fast, accurate reading of someone's blood alcohol concentration in less than a second. We're basically taking a university chemistry lab, making it the size of your smartphone, and putting it in a car. As you can see, we've made significant progress with respect to size and complexity of the sensors and laser packages. We started with a larger package and have been gradually reducing the size all the way down to something small. With these improvements, we're closer than ever to being able to integrate the touch sensor into a vehicle. But to get there, we still have ways to go to reduce the size, complexity, and power use. This demonstration shows the current sensor and its current iteration as you see it on the bench. What we're basically doing is introducing different alcohol concentration samples in front of the sensor and asking the sensor to predict what the alcohol concentration is going to be in these samples. We start with a water sample that has no alcohol, and in this case, the sensor has to show us a zero value, and we increase that concentration multiple times, and we see how the sensor is going to predict that value as we increase the concentration. Now, similar to the breath-based system, we needed to develop something that represents a human. And in this case, we need to develop something that represents the palmer side of the hand, the hand itself, or the finger. So over time, we evolved it and have been able to develop what we call is the phantom tissue, the finger phantom tissue. And in this case, it's a gel-based phantom tissue that we use, and we can dial in the exact amount of alcohol into this gelatin-based block and put it in front of the sensor and be able to calculate different alcohol concentrations and see how well the sensor is calibrated and how well it works. This allows us to accelerate some of the development as opposed to having to require human subjects constantly next to the sensor to measure. So that covers the touch sensor development in the lab. Both the touch sensor 
and the breath sensor continue to undergo extensive testing in the lab, in hospital settings, in vehicles, and in the real world for us to better understand how they're gonna perform and for these sensors to last the life of a vehicle. Dr. Kelly Ozdemir is gonna provide you with a better understanding of our field operational trials or our human subject testing and human subjects driving. I hope this gives you a good idea of the progress that we've been making and a snapshot of what the future looks like when these alcohol sensors will be ready. Welcome to the Vehicle Integration Lab. My name is Dr. Kelly Ozdemir, and I lead all the human subject testing and human subject driving efforts under the DADS program. As you can imagine, our sensors have to undergo significant testing to ensure their accuracy and precision before being introduced to the consumer. The first stage is in a tightly controlled environment. We have full control over every single variable introduced to the sensor. This allows us to capture baseline data of sensor performance for a wide range of conditions we would expect in a vehicle environment. The second stage is in a tightly controlled environment with humans. This is done at McLean Hospital, which is a Harvard-affiliated medical facility and allows us to test people from different ages, races, and medical histories. It also allows us to test for real-world conditions, such as eating, smoking, dancing, or other physical activity. The third stage is what we consider the wild, wild west. This is the first study of its kind. We install the sensors in a vehicle and test them in a traditional vehicle environment. We use highly complex 3D printers to help outfit the sensors into the vehicle. And then we integrate them into four main areas. The driver door, the driver's steering wheel, the passenger door, and the passenger dashboard. It allows for us to test the sensors with different factors, including temperature, humidity, altitude, windows up and down, AC on and off, etc. This is also where we make sure the sensor can tell the difference between the driver and the passenger. Thanks to our human subject testing, we've been able to collect a significant amount of data that helps us fine tune the sensors. To date, we've been able to run 200 study days with more than 300 individuals in over 400 controlled tests. This has given us more than 136,000 breath, blood, and touch samples. All of this data allows us to accurately quantitate the sensor performance, so we can make sure it's accurate and precise when introduced to consumers. I hope this gives you a good overview of all the human subject testing and human subject driving we do under the DADS program. For more information, visit www.dads.org.